Okay, hello everyone. I'm back again with another artist interview. And today I have uh, Keith Prosek. Yes, Prosek, Keith Prosek. And, and I met Keith at Rootwire. And that was in 2018. Yeah, it was about two years ago. Yep. No. And it's, it's been a moment, <laughs> and a lot has changed since then. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> so, um, what have you been doing since then? Um, it, it's just, you know, with, with art, it's always pushing it forward. You know, uh, to me, it always feels like, or at least the creative process is like, as an artist, I'm in a vessel, and the art and the creativity is a vessel, and it's just constantly, like, moving forward. And I try to steer it as much as I possibly can, but it's like, you know, you never, you don't know where the current's going to go. So it's, you kind of go with it because, you know, the art and the experience blend each other and it's part of the understanding of the experience. And, um, you know, it, the sales are going through pandemic at the moment. <laughs> so, um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of heavy influence on it. So, um, I, I, I'm just, you know, I do a lot of, a lot of my stuff is professional. I'm a professional artist. Um, I do both architecture and painting. So I do commissions. Um, I also do consulting. Um, I do a lot of residential design, um, which helps pay the bills most of the time. It's the architecture helps the art move along. Um, but lately I've been getting into art direction and wanting to get into sort of like uh, graphic novels and game design and um, I guess the big thing I've been working on the past year is I'm working on the artwork for a board game um, that we're, um, you know, we're bringing to market, hopefully kickstarting in about a month. Oh so. wow, that sounds really fascinating. You've got a lot going on. Yeah, I'm in Aries, I like it that way. Lots of stuff. Nice. A lot of things happening simultaneously. <laughs> yeah, why not? Hey. So. Sometimes I wonder if there could be like more hours in a day. That'd be perfect. But tell us a little bit about yourself. A little, a brief bio or a more extended bio, if you will. Um, how did you decide to become an artist? Was it something that you actually chose or did it just happen randomly um well as a uh, becoming a painter uh, getting into oil painting was a surprise um i came through architecture school and i actually hated painting um you know coming through architecture everything was like straight edged sharp tip you know everything was measured everything had to be exact you know, you were going for, you know, like precision, whereas like with the tip of a paintbrush, there's nothing but chaos there. And I'm like, I can't paint a straight line with this. So um, it was always, uh, it was something I never really aspired to um, until, you know, probably about my early thirties. And um, that's when, um, you know, and there, there's a there's a couple things that were at, at factor there that ultimately brought me there, um, but it was just I started having experiences that I needed to. Um, I was trying to get. Um, I had that been diagnosed bipolar, mm. um, and um, and and there, there's there's a lot to that. But um, the medication that they put me on. Um, basically was taking all of my creativity away oh. and um i needed to get off the medication and somebody had recommended to me painting mandalas or working with mandalas and um i started with that black and white just like using it on my drafting table like i would just like like if, during the day if i was struggling working on a design on a house i would just take a moment and do a quick mandala and i was using that to help keep 
like sort of help to, help to keep the keel balanced so that I can keep the creative flow going and not let it get overloaded. Because I, I would just push, 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 and then I would let it get overloaded, and then I would have to collapse. It's just like being able to bring meditation and working with the mandalas uh, help me balance both sides of the brain mm -hmm. or the mind. And um, just, I did that for about two or three years. And then that ultimately opened up something that, um, I mean, the only way to experience it, say I experienced it was in a dream where I was dreaming I was painting a mandala and opening it up in the center. And it was all in colors. And I woke up from it like wide awake. And, um, I was like, I needed to start exploring it in color. So I started using colored pencils and colored markers. And then um, I was just like, oh no, I'm gonna have to learn how to paint. Um, because there was this thing that was coming out. There's this thing that it opened up. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, over the course of four years that like little bits here, little bits there, little awakenings here, little yeah. nudges here that goes to a little pop that lights it all up like a Christmas tree. And then all of a sudden you're there and it's like you have to explore this. And sometimes that thing need to explore something comes so strong. It puts you up against something you don't necessarily think of yourself as being able to do or something that you really didn't like doing. You're like, oh my God, I got to learn how to do this to, to make it through. So it's just this big, huge challenge that comes. And, um, you know, I, I just, for some reason, knew that oil was going to be the way. And I ultimately just started with oils on canvas, bringing the mandala work into the canvas and just went from there. And, um, you know, just kept going with it. You know, it was, a, like I said earlier, it was a yeah. vessel. It just, it opened up a world I had no idea it was there for me. And this was, I was 32 when I picked up the paintbrush for the first time. So how long ago was that? Oh, God, what year is it? Um, now we're 2020. <laughs> how can you forget that oh, it's 2020? 18 years ago. <laughs> wow. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Been, so you've been doing this for a while. Yeah. I, I definitely can see the architecture in your paintings and I can also see the mandalas. It's pretty obvious. They're mm. both there. Every yeah, they balance day. each other very well. Um, no, no. They're one, one by themselves for me takes me too far in one direction. Yeah. Like the architecture keeps me really, really well grounded on the left side and the art allows me to go, like gets me out there on the right side. If I go too far in either direction, you know, if I, if I was to go too far in architecture, I would just learn all sense of get, like just be all rigid and have absolutely, you know, no sense of, of emotional connection or empathy, empathic connections there. But then on the other side, if I go too far out there into like, let's say the chaos, <laughs> um, it's, you can get lost out there too. So it's, and the hard part is finding a way to get them to both, even though they balance each other, it's, that's still a struggle. Yeah. It's like the, um, I call it the infinite between or the, the extreme middle. Yeah. You know, there's this middle point, you know, which is the third point where I'm trying to pivot around, where I'm trying to let it be the channel for my creativity fully balanced in both the left side and the right side. So that, um, no, I, I definitely see that in your work. I think every artwork that I've seen of yours has had that sort of um, balance of what you're saying, the architecture and the, yeah. the mandala. But I want to call them feminine, masculine too. Like, Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. There, there's, a, there's a balance there that you, you're maintaining. And, that's where, and to me, that's where I feel the most me and the war I feel I can be myself is there when I'm fully truly balanced and when when it gets off yeah. you know and, and the thing is it's like all of it works as a way of maintaining the balance it's like a self-feeding system you know the, the the artwork what you see as the order and the structure in the paintings that I do is and and there's a little bit, of, even though it looks like a perfect mandala or if it, it's a mandala, it's not perfect on either side. It's, it, you, you can't just mirror the, the corners and they line up because each of them is just me, like analog, just 
physically with my hands painting them and trying to match them with my mind. And that's where a lot of the wonderful balance comes in, where it's like in my mind, I'm practicing flipping things in my universe and it gives me a better perspective of that, that reality. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, ultimately what I like about the pieces that I do are the shapes or the mistakes or the, 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 the things that end up being wrong or that aren't symmetrical because those are the areas or the moments that I'm on the canvas where I'm trying to bring balance to myself. You know, it's like the order's there, but it's like there's this whole battle and war of getting to that point. That, that's the final end point. <laughs> yeah, I totally get it. Uh, I've been in those places. <laughs> yeah. What inspires your art? Um, it's the art, my art is really me exploring like where I'm at in the world. Like, it, like if like, I, I'll have something that I want to explore like, Bud like, um, like painting a Buddhist head or um, uh, uh, painting um, Saraswati or a Hindu deity or a Christian deity or, uh, some, or emulating something that Michelangelo or Rodin did. Um, you know, the inspiration is, you know, being able to use, like, understanding things, like, just like this awe of creation and trying to emulate it and trying to align, like, myself with the creative forces that are around us. Like, we, we all say, like, if you look at all of the religions, they all seem to come from this place of this creator essence. There's this creator divine consciousness that created everything and it's in, in this act of supposed to be in this act of love and this act of bringing forth and this act of you know i don't know if you want to call it sacrifice or but this just act of being forward and you know as artists what we're trying to do is get ourselves in alignment with that and that's that's when i feel most inspired and that's where i that's where it comes from, is when I'm in line with the universe that is with me. And sometimes it's going through difficult things like we are right now. Yeah. You know, there's a path, that the, the water has to flow somewhere. The, follow the water. <laughs> the water goes somewhere and, and everything, there's a, there's a path through. And, you know, um, and I don't know if that answers the question of inspiration because it's all woven together. It's, it's, the the inspiration that comes across on the canvas is just me realizing myself like you know realizing and working through who i'm trying to be and understanding the world around so um so what i hear you saying is that you are inspired by all of creation <laughs> yeah and 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 a lot of it is uh, creation stories you know, we best understand creation by hearing about it, talking about it, relating to it in stories that we've told ourselves through the ages, through the different cultures. And even though they might have different names, different faces and different places, mm -hmm. they all have the same essence and they're all following the same patterns to it. And, you know, it's, it's, and it's, it's all in this beautiful unfolding pattern like an unfolding flower or like like a river or just all of it and it's just how it all connects to each other mm -hmm. yeah i can see you have some of your artwork around you <laughs> would would you share a little bit about your creative process maybe in one or two of these mm -hmm. um, um well things <laughs> The, the, well, the main one that's here on the easel now, um, I'm actually trying something new that I haven't tried in a while, like ever. <laughs> and that's to focus on one painting at a time. Mm -hmm. so it's, a, it's a little bit of a new experience for me. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. Because I used to be all over the place, like 50 paintings I'm working on, you know, um, which I still am working on them. But at least focus on one of them. Um, this is a piece that, um, I, I worked on for the um, Amanda Sage, um, along with the, um, the Vienna Academy of Visionary Art had a month long um, workshop called Transformation 2020 that was in July. Mm -hmm. 
uh -huh. and it was a piece that I did for that class. Oh, wow. And, okay. um, and that whole experience sort of came out of the pandemic. Um, so, um, so this is a piece that I've been working on there. Unfortunately, I'm supposed to have it submitted for the, the, um, the exhibition for the class, but I'm afraid because I'm not done with it. <laughs> I feel like I'm not done with, well, I'm not, I know I'm not done with it, so I'm afraid yeah. to show it. So I was supposed to submit it yesterday, um, but uh, I, I'm afraid to. So there's a little bit of that in here right now, um, because there's still more that I want to do with it. And so I'm, how about your process? Like, if you don't mind talking about the process of painting okay. this. Yes. Um, I mean, what happens? Like, how do you start it? Where, where do you get the idea from? Um, I mean, I know that each um, piece is very different, but it, just, it, you know, just in general. The, the, I, I guess where it starts because, like you said, every piece is different. Um, um, I never know what they're going to be. So the process is, is trying to figure out what they are going to be, going, go, going to, what it's going to become. And I guess where I start with them is, um, as a, well, I mean, I, I, I like to call myself a visionary artist, is what I do is, is, is there's a vision up here that I have. And it can be either of a specific thing, like a snake or, a, you know, a, a, a landscape, or it could be colors or it could be emotions. It's just whatever I'm feeling like I need to express. And when I approach the canvas, um, you can see there's a big heavy grid on this piece. Let me see if I can zoom yeah, in. Yeah, I can totally see a grid. My goodness, I have like some like lighting issues here today. <laughs> I'm gonna turn that just a little bit. So hopefully, like, so I've got like what's called an armature, like with, with um, um, a lot of artists use what is called an armature, which is sort of like a grid pattern or a structure to the painting that they put underneath. So that's typically where I start, and that's the beginning part of the process. And from there, I just build, it's just building up the painting. Yeah. And it's, um, the hard part is letting go, especially if you don't know what the piece is going to be. The hardest part is when you don't know what the piece is going to be and where to start. Yeah. So it just, it starts very vague. Mm -hmm. And with the oil paint, because I, I typically work oils, and that's layer on top of layer on top of layer. This is probably about eight to nine layers yeah. on top of each other. So this is so, mish, mish technique, right? Yes. Well, this is my first attempt at the mish technique. Oh, okay. And, and you're using casein? Um, I, I, I was using casein in the beginning of the piece. Um, mm -hmm. And then to sort of like, we were coming up against the deadline because as artists, we always face the deadline. Yeah. Um, you know, I kind of fell back into my old, like my, my, my natural routine, which isn't using casein, uh -huh. um, just for speed, because, um, um, you know, it's just when you get into the hurry, when you're learning something new and you have to be done, it's like you, you, you fall to what you know best yeah. um, because it has to get done. So, so that's a part of it. I'm gonna be like, I'm gonna continue doing more mish technique, and I'll probably take Amanda's workshop again. Um, but um, so yeah, part of the process is dealing with the potentialities of failure or not being able to accomplish or get what you want to do. Um, and I'm kind of like right on that edge where I feel like with this piece in the process is um, it's to me, it's still, believe it or not, in a failure phase because I'm not getting it to where I want it to be. I'm struggling with it, but that's part of, that's the part of the process yeah. that we work through inside and it reflects off of this. So I'm gonna give it tonight and I'll see where it is in the morning. And if I like it in the morning, I will ask them kindly because it was due yesterday, if they'll still let <laughs> in the exhibition. <laughs> I mean, it looks done to me, but hey, you're the artist, so until you yeah. say it's done, it's still in progress. <laughs> and, and, and that's part of that's part of the struggle. It's like I gotta let it go. Yeah. I just sometimes have to... you don't want to because you're not ready to. So that's good. No, I want to stay in this house forever. <laughs> 
Don't we all? <laughs> well, I mean, the, the special thing about this piece is, is, and the intention behind it is, I'm looking for a new reflection of myself as I'm going into it. Like, I feel like I'm entering a new phase of my life. Yeah. You know, I'm coming on 50, and that's a big, huge deal for me. Um, half a century. Uh, um, I beat I'm, you to I'm it. A, I, am I a sage now? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. I just, I don't, I don't want to be one yet. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to play a little more. Well, uh, I think you get to do that. Oh, as long as you're an artist, that's all we do, right? Yeah, I'm just, I'm just being, look at me. <laughs> <laughs> what is your biggest fear as an artist? I'm not going to, uh, my biggest fear is not being able to communicate the vision that I am trying to communicate. And all of my work is of a unified vision that I'm trying to get out. Like, um, you know, like term it as like a great work or just, or what I'm trying to get forth in my life here. And I feel like I've got maybe about 15 years of content still up here to, that's trying to come out. Um, actually, more. I think there's there's like 20 years, and I I'm planning that I will only have 15. Maybe I don't know. I'm just, <laughs> so is it, my fear is that well, my biggest fear is what is it for? I'm spent. I'm dedicating a big portion of my life and my existence to this. And if I like, if I go, and it's like, it's like if it if nobody sees it, does it mean anything? You know, it's like if a tree falls in the forest and nobody's there to see it, does it make a sound? Is it pretty? Was the fall beautiful? You know? Um, Good question. You know, it, it's like, but on the flip side, I have to remind myself that it's really about me moving myself forward and the art is just the shell that I'm leaving behind. Mm -hmm. So um, the, the, the fear is, um, I paint a lot about my spiritual growth and process and I paint it for hopefully that it will resonate with others in guiding like as a way that they can reflect off and it's just I hope I'm communicating it properly I'm hoping I'm communicating my visions the way that I am feeling them I'm hoping that that's the way that it's coming across. and and it's not like a specific thing it's just that, like there's somebody that's getting somebody out of it and they're using that to explore something in their own way you know it's just you know at the end of the day i want it to be for something more than just for myself i mean don't you feel like sometimes you're creating for yourself though not necessarily for someone to see it i mean yeah, yeah that's part of the whole process is wanting to have someone see it because what's the point but on some level it's also somewhat of like a selfish thing like it really is i mean that's the hard part to that. the artist it, it is selfish <laughs> i mean like i sat like it, it, i i like you know, there, there's a lot of things I don't want to necessarily go into because they're very personal, but there's a lot of sacrifices I've had to make to be able to follow this path because I feel like I have to explore it for myself. Yeah. You know, it, it's like, it's like, I got to do this for me because there's something there I'm trying to understand that I'm supposed to, that I'm trying to pick up in this life, in this world, in this carnation. And, um, you know, my fear is that another fear is like maybe like will i figure it out <laughs> so will i figure it out will i figure out what i'm looking for in all of this yeah you know um so if you had a um someone come and say that you are granted a wish now around your artwork what would you wish for what would be like a goal that you want to accomplish that um one for one reason or the other it, something's holding you back from it the one the wish that i would have that would like the one thing that would make like 
advance my artwork or be, allow me to achieve what I want to achieve is if there is some genie that came along and was able to take care of my bare essentials of life. <laughs> You know, and, and and I'm not talking about living in a fancy house with a pool. I'm just like, it's like, I love the house that I live in right now. It's, it's not a lot of money. It's just, you know, just to be able to, like, the, the part that's really, after 18 years, that, that really gets to you is the constant hustle. Mm -hmm. and, and the feeling that of entropy, and I'm running out of energy. Yeah. And I'm not going to be able to finish what I want to be able to finish because, you know, it's just, I can't support myself with it. You yeah. know, that's the hard part. So like the, the, the fact that like the wish to be able to have the bare essentials of housing, food and supplies, the, the, the ability to just to be able to sit in a space, to be able to get to, you know, work and, and produce my work at a nice even pace and not have to kill myself constantly at like 12 hours a day, you know, to keep it going, you know, it's, it's, that's to me, I, the, the wish that I would, I really, 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 really want um, more than anything else. <laughs> you know, it really fascinates me. Like you said 18 years. So to me, you're a master of your craft after 18 years of doing something you better be a master of your craft and yet you're still having to worry about you know the necessities and, and you know like if you look at other vocations and other um people doing other things for 18 years they probably accomplished a level of success that artists are not allowed to because they are artists. Sometimes it feels that way to me. It's, 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 a, it's a constant race with entropy. <laughs> you know, it's, um, you know, well, it, well, well, the hard part, because most of us as artists, we're on our own. Mm -hmm. You know, as like, like professional artists, we're, we're trying to be on our own. We're trying to, you know, the, 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 the 18 years is the, what like is again the self that there is that selfish part that comes into it is you know i want to do it i want to do it my way i want to create what i want to create i don't want to like i can probably be like i can probably be an art director for a gaming company or a graphic novels company mm -hmm. and you know make good money at that yeah but you know that's a 50 to 60 hour a week commitment you know i try i like because like i tried that i tried to go teach for three years in the middle of my professional artist career and that took up 40 to 50 hours a week where it got to the point where i was too tired to do what i really wanted to be doing anyway yeah you know um so it's because when you have a vision, you just want to follow that vision. You don't want to be following someone else's vision either. Yeah. It gets tricky for artists to all be on the same page because everybody's following something, you know. Yeah. And it doesn't always necessarily lead to that same place. And, and a lot of times you really have no idea where it's yeah. going to lead. And, and actually, the less rigidity to that path, the better. To be able to let it flow. Like as an artist, you, you need to be able to adapt to what comes your way. Um, to that, because it's like you're, you've got this egg of creation that you're, you're building with your life in, the wake, of, in like the wake of your life as you're trailing through it, through this realm. You're leaving all of these skins behind you of your memories, mm -hmm. you know, are, like in paintings are artists' memories of that moment. Like, like it's like it's almost like a. I'm getting I'm getting a little bit out there. It's like almost like a record, okay? Like the way a record records air into wax, the sound vibration into the wax. The artist is painting their experiential vibration into the painting. Okay. You know, it, you know, and, and, and it's a record. 
it's a memory of that artist's experience, that artist's experience. Absolutely. It's, yeah. I always like to feel like it, every painting that an artist makes is a part of their soul. It, it, it is. It's a, it's a reflection of it. It's, yeah. it's, it's the artist, it, it's the artist looking upon the face of the waters at the reflection of their soul. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, yeah, uh, it's, there's a, there's something coming through, there, there's something, there's a story I am trying, I don't know if it's my higher self or it's a past life or whatever it is, I'm coming through my, in my artwork, there is something I feel like is being transmitted to me oh, and yeah. I'm trying to understand it. You know, that it's like, it can, what direction? Can you share a bit more? Um, what do you mean by direction? Like, what is coming from? Um, it's it's kind of like painting. Um, it, it, it's like if I want to have a superhero ability. I want the ability to paint the world I die into. I am painting the world that I want to die into. Okay. Does that make sense? That makes sense. Sure. I am painting, like, the world that I want to transition into, I am creating. And, I, and I'm putting my like, memories into there as a way of being able to trans, like, carry them with me. And uh, in fact, I've got, I, I don't have it available. I wish I did. I've got a painting called Burst of Spring where it's the very veranda that I would like to wake up into on, in the afterlife. Yeah. So, yeah. so sort of like that's the impression that like once I get past that veil, that's where when I open the eyes for the first time after the, <laughs> after the um, you know, that's the, you know, yeah. At least that's the dream. <laughs> those, that, that's the power I wish I had. I, I had. Maybe yeah. I do. I don't know. I'm, I'm probably do. Wrapping my head. Wrapping um, my head. So you mentioned the painting. You do have a website. People can find. I do have a website. Where can people classic, find you? Classicarts.com. Okay, and you're on Instagram as well, right? And yeah. Facebook. The whole spiel. Same name. Yeah. yeah the um. Yeah. Um. The website. Keith Prosick arts.com is the best place to get me at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, I'm reworking my keithprosic.com website. It's going to be something pretty different. Um, it's going to take me a little while to do it. It's going to be a virtual, it's going to be a virtual gallery that you can wander through with all of my mm -hmm. artwork, both art, architecture, and everything else. Um, whereas my Keith Prosic Arts is going to be more the website that's going to be the information about me and they'll both work together. Mm -hmm. So, but for now, it's keithprosicarts.com. And besides selling your paintings, you also provide other services, right? Um, well, I do architectural design work. I do residential design work, um, mostly custom homes. Um, and that's what typically what pays the bills. Yeah. Uh, but then I'm also, the big thing I'm working on is I am the art director and artist for a game called Arcane Arena, where I'm doing all of the art Oh wow! And it's like a, it's a, it's a, it's like a cross between Magic: The Gathering card game and chess, with an Avatar: The Last Airbender feel to it. So, so, so it's basically a board game with cards, and the cards move your pieces around the board, Very and cool. um, it's sort of set in a magical martial arts setting. And what's the goal of the game? Like, what are you supposed to accomplish by the end of the turn? Um, be the last person standing. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like life itself. But it's done in a way of, even though you're opponents with each other, you kind of work with each other, learning, mm -hmm. like, learning magic, learning how the magic works, how the, uh, how this, the special, this, it's a special arena that's tied into the magical energies of the planet that it is on like on ley lines and because of it, it's able to harness the energy. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's ultimately the goal of this arena in the narrative, in the backstory, it's actually post-apocalyptic. Yeah. Um, it's um, in a world where it's coming out of the apocalypse and these nations have arisen 
And um, well, at least this, this is where we're going with it. We'll see where, if it ends up because it's kind of telling itself. But what we see is, is like an area where like potential future leaders of the world come together to learn how to cooperate with each other yeah. and, 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 and build a civilization coming out of an apocalypse that won't let that happen again. So at least that's, that's, the, the, that's the, the, the moral and narrative behind it. That's very fascinating. Do you have any favorite master artists at all? Yes. Who would I do. Be? Um, the artist that really caught my attention first in this life was an artist by the name of Roger Dean, R-O-G-E-R-D-E-A-N. Mm -hmm. um, and he's still going. Um, oh, really? He's best known for doing a lot of the album covers for a lot of the prog bands in the 70s, like Yes and King Crimson. I think he's done a couple of King Crimson. And like, I think he did an, some, like he did basically album covers, but they're all of mystical landscapes. Oh, nice. And just like, he was the first artist that was a, I've ever experienced. Like I experienced him coming through high school, looking at the album artwork while listening to this mystical sort of out there progressive rock music that was coming out of the seventies and just getting transported into this visionary realm. Yeah. So he's the first artist that opened that up to me. And then, um, and then of course, Alex and Alison Gray were the second big influence on me um, later on in life when I was actually moving into painting. Um, in my early 30s, um, it was Alex and Allison, which were the next heaviest influences for me. Mm. Um, you know, looking in the past, like like if we're looking like Renaissance um, impressionists or any artist, all of them really. Um, I, I guess I like the Renaissance as a period the most, um, but then I also like the impressionists as mm -hmm. well. And um, oh, I guess another artist is Thomas Cole. I'm always, I'm following, I fall for the landscape artists. Thomas Cole was sort of like the founder of the Hudson River School, which was like the first art sort of movement in America. I'm gonna have to look them up. I don't think I'm familiar with either. Wrong yeah, Thomas either. Cole, Thomas Cole was in the early part of the 19th century. He was commissioned by Congress to travel out West to experience it. Like, um, like the Grand Canyon, like all the, Rocky Mountains and the Sierra Nevadas and experience the majesty of it and come back and paint them to help westward expansion. Yeah. So, but his, he painted landscapes like, like, you know, ultimately he led to Bierstadt and church. Mm -hmm. So, so. So if you were to be born again, would you want to still be an artist in your next life? If there is such a thing as a next life? I, I absolutely, absolutely. I'll be, you know, it's, you know, I'll be a creator one way or another. Um, yeah. Us artists are out of our minds. Or in them. <laughs> Or we're in them. They, I mean, we are, we are in the right mind. What does out of our mind mean? <laughs> um, I, mean, I don't know a single artist who wouldn't want to be an artist, despite the struggles that they go through on a daily basis. <laughs> well, the struggle, okay, well, no, 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 no. It's the struggle is not the product of the art. The struggle is there whether the art's there or not. The art is what helps us with the struggle. Absolutely. I love that. I love that. Yeah, absolutely. That's a good way to put it. <laughs> so, yeah. I, I, I mean, it's, it's who I am. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's being a path of a, taking the path of a creator. Mm -hmm. And the responsibility of it, too. There's a big responsibility come from your creations because you know, you're affecting, your, your, your creations can affect others. What has art taught you? I think I'm going to end with this question. We're kind of like into the hour and I don't think people want longer videos. These days. Um, what has art taught me? Yes. Um, art has taught me how to art. <laughs> um, Besides that, what else? <laughs> how to art how to be myself. I mean, that's really what, what it's at. It's like art teaches 
it, art teaches me who I am. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, does that sound silly? No, that's you know? absolutely um, on the point, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> and, but not only that, going beyond that, it's, it, also, it also reflects and teaches me what kind of world I want to be in. What, like, what world do I want to envision being in? And how do I, like, emulate that outward? Like, how do, how does it go off of the canvas into yeah. my everyday life? It's like, in, it, like, with meditation, it's like, do you meditate? Like, it's not just being on the mat. It's being in, in that state. Yes. All yeah. the time. To be, to be in a constant creative state. Yeah, you're putting, you're also putting your visions out. And you're also helping others be inspired by those visions that you're making available to them. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, this was a great, great conversation. It was, and thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Um, of course. It's, it, it's good. It feels good to talk about artwork, and it's good to have a platform to be able to, because, you know, this helps this helps me get myself like it helps me understand it helps me understand myself as an yeah. artist when I talk to other people about it you know because yeah. I don't normally I wouldn't go I wouldn't ask these questions of myself that I wouldn't go into and I wouldn't think about it and you know this was good this helped this helps clarify a lot of things I've been struggling with this year but mm -hmm. we'll leave that for another time I'm glad to be helpful Absolutely. you know what I had one more question actually before okay. we wrap up have you ever had a mystical experience? And if you have, would you mind sharing it right now? <laughs> um, yes. It's the first experience I recall in my memory. And it's really what, one of the, it's really what leads me to painting. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know how far to take the, the this, has, this mystical experience has multiple levels. <laughs> um, I'll just say what it was at first, and then if it sparks another question, I will, sure. I'll, uh, I, I will do a follow-up. Mm -hmm. But the first memory that I have of this existence is being in, falling asleep with my grandparents in their bed at about th between three and four years old. Mm -hmm. And I could not sleep. And they were fast asleep, but I was up. I don't know what time it was. It was in the middle of the night. Um, you know, in my mind, I play it back at in the three o'clock hour. Um, but um, I, for some reason, I couldn't fall asleep. And I sat up and I looked towards the doorway to my grandparents' bathroom. And in the doorway was the profile or outline of a human form in white and blue glowing light. It was just the outline, not the body. I could see through the body because I could see the bathroom where the body was. Like, I, I hate to say it, this way, but I saw the toilet through the body. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, just maybe why I don't put toilets where you can see them from the bed. Anyway, um, <laughs> um, but it was shimmering white and blue lights and it just stood there. It just stayed there so solid, didn't move. I didn't move. I would close my eyes, I would try to go back to sleep, but I wouldn't go to sleep, and I would come up and it was still there. Um, I was old enough to understood about dreams and pinching yourself, mm -hmm. to know that, and so I pinched myself and I felt the pain so I knew I wasn't dreaming. Um, but again, this is three to four years old, it could still be a hallucination. You know, I, I don't know how real it could be. You know, because yeah. it is three to four years old, how much is my past memory, my retro, rec, how, am I retconning the experience, like without realizing it? But that is my first mystical experience that I had. And it drives a lot of what my artwork is because it's part of it is trying to understand that. Because I still don't know for a fact what that was. I've got a better understanding from thinking about it over now, 40 or so years of what I think that that moment was. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I won't know until I die. Wonderful. Well, yeah, I mean, it's hard to explain these things, but um, I think there's, I'm not sure exactly who says it or where, I'll have to look it up, but 
something about children being more open to experiencing other dimensions. Yeah. But that's because they have not really been programmed yet. And, and, and as you grow older, you tend to forget all that stuff. So yeah. how to yeah. tune into it. And that's basically where, you know, when you take psychedelics, that's basically the dimensions it takes you to. But children are more attuned to them. They don't even need the psychedelics to access those dimensions. And, and, and I think in ultimately in time, you don't necessarily need the psychedelics either. Yeah. There, I mean, that, that, that's always been training wheels. Um, to start that process. Yeah. Um, well, the, re remember. <laughs> you know, this is a thing that, like, this is an anchor in my memory. Yeah. This is, like, um, like, the most important memory that I have, and it is a mystical experience, yeah. and all of my artwork does get tied to it. Well, that's profound, and thank you for sharing that. Um, it's really, I, I mean, I can totally see it in your work that there's, you know, some mystical stuff going on. So yeah, yeah. I really appreciate you showing up for this conversation and hopefully we'll have more in the future. Yes, if you just let me know when it's available. Workshops with the Greys or... <laughs> what? Somewhere, you know, in certain workshops at some point or... Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot, there's a lot more in front of us than behind us. Yeah, we'll, we'll hope that we'll be able to like actually commune again with other artists instead of yeah. just be on internet oh, Zooms and... We will, we will, but you know what? We're making the best of our time. That's right, yeah. we are. Okay, take care. All right, bye Susie. Bye, thanks a lot. You're welcome, have a great day. You too.